Hello and welcome to another video from DCD Transporters. I'm Darren and thanks for joining me today for another one of our little videos. The swamper behind me is what I want to talk about and my love-hate relationship with it, if I'm honest. They've become very popular over the years, haven't they? Particularly the last couple of years. Swampers have become a whole like little you know, subculture within the transporter scene um, and they are you know very very popular and you could argue quite cool um, I think they can be a lot of fun but today I was just going to chat to you about why I'm not sure if we should have built one or not and whether I actually like it or not so hang around and you'll hear my views on why I think it might have been a mistake <laughs> So is it the easiest conversion you can do on a transporter? Yeah, of course it is. Chuck some wheels on it and you've pretty much created a swamper, haven't you? You know, the off-road rugged style wheels on standard suspension works pretty well and creates that swamper look. Is it something I'd do again on one of my own vans? If I'm really honest, probably not. There's some real pros and cons for both. So let's go through some of those now. Um, the pros it can be quite a lot of fun. You know, if you want to do some mild green laning, I'm not going to say you're going to be able to get everywhere. You know, one of my friends um, has a tongue in cheek sort of uh, impression on what his off-road style van is. And that's probably capable of getting across some wet grass. And that's it. Unless you've got a four wheel drive one of these, for which I can see the purposes of making a swamper, then, you know, a normal two wheel drive transport, uh, even with some pretty decent tires on it, is probably going to get outclassed on anything other than a muddy track, you know, so some wet grass is about all it's going to be capable of. Tell me I'm wrong, you know, you're not going to be going off roading in it, you know, even if it's lifted, even if it's got some really decent tires on it, you will find the limits of a front wheel drive transporter quite quickly, you know. If you're towing with it, forget it. Too much weight on the back is gonna just make the front spin. So even getting off a, a relatively, relatively, relatively wet, you know, uh, piece of grass on a campsite with a trailer behind you, or dare I say a caravan, you're probably gonna find the limits of what even the best tires will do. So, you know, that is that. But is it fun to drive on muddy lanes? Yeah, of course it is. You know, you can see the van behind me is pretty muddy. You know, I have been using it to do a little bit of mild green laning uh, on some woodland that we've got access to locally. It is loads of fun. Yes. So there's that. Can you drive it anywhere without any worry? Yeah, of course you can. You know, that's probably one of the best bits of it. You know, over the last few weeks, maybe a couple of months, We've had some horrific weather. We've been flooded in our village now a couple of times. Do I prefer taking the silver van home when the weather's really rubbish? Yeah, of course I do. But I think half of that is because it's such a sort of, that sort of vehicle where I'm perhaps not so bothered about it. Then, of course, that makes it life a lot easier, doesn't it? Yes, it's a little bit higher up. Yes, it'll go through the you know, stand in water a little bit better than what my car will and what the red van will do. So yes, it is better in those conditions. And of course I will favor it to take it home because if the worst case did happen, I'm not overly bothered about it. You know, it was a very budget van, a very budget build. I'm not as emotionally and financially invested into it as what I have with my other vehicles. So. Yes, you know, so I do drive it slightly differently to what I drive the car and to what I drive the red van. So, yes, it does make it a more relaxing drive in some ways um, because you, you're not worried. I'm not worried. So, yeah, that's a positive. Yes, it will go through somewhat, you know, relatively deep standing water um, and some of the floods that we've seen. Um, more happy driving that than what I am anything else. So that's a definite positive. Uh, the looks of it is subjective. 
if I'm really honest, it's not for me. Um, I've always preferred the sporty look bands than what I do the off-road looking bands. It is a look, if you're in that sort of, or you prefer that kind of style, then fantastic, it's for you. Um, it's not really for me. I'm just lucky that we've got a couple of you know choices and this was our choice to do with this van rather than go down and doing the lowered route again we decided that we were going to do something slightly different with this van so yes it's it's one of them isn't it it's personal preference it's just i don't think i'll do it again that's the, that's the thing um so i think we've run out of positives already <laughs> unfortunately potholes oh that's another positive yeah it is a positive that you can, you know, worry less about potholes than what you do in like a lowered van with skinnier profile tires. But again, it's like conditioning. I've always had lowered vehicles, you know, even from like the big stuff that I used to drive, it was always lowered, you know, so um, you get used to that. You adapt to that. I'm looking for potholes all the time. Even potholes in something like the silver van can cause a problem. You know, the roads are so bad that you, you're constantly dodging potholes no matter what you're in. Because yeah, otherwise it will just break something else. If it doesn't destroy the tire, it just goes further up the suspension to destroy something else. So you still can't drive it within, you know, complete impunity to, to every condition that's on the road. But yes, it is better. So we'll have that as a positive. So there's three major reasons as to why you might prefer the, the Swamper style. So the durability of it, the go anywhere, and it subjectively, you might like the look of it. Negatives, and unfortunately, there are some big negatives for this look. Again, it's subjective. Do you like it? Do you not like it? You know, that's personal preference. What we have done though, is ruin the economy. And I'll be quite honest with that. It has plummeted. You know, we put these tires on it and these are actually quite good. Um, I'll take a, a, a shot of what they are. They're uh, Arivo all-terrain tires. And they've got a mix of probably 60, 40 road off-road. So they're quite a good choice to be fair. And they're certainly not the worst ones that we could have gone for. And when I say worst, I mean, you know, in terms of its off-road ability. Now, let's be fair, the van spends most of its life on the road. So going for a very extreme off-road tyre would have been ridiculous. You know, not only are they really noisy, but they, the, the fuel economy would have been even worse than what we're experiencing now. To put it into perspective, we were getting nearly 40 to the gallon out of this. You know, I'm not driving it hard. It is what it is. It's an old girl. It's done a fair few miles. But, you know, as an average, we were getting somewhere between about 38 and about 40. You know, pretty much everywhere we were going. We're doing long trips out towards Norfolk. We've been sort of here, there and everywhere with it. And, of course, it's recently done Scotland and back. But it did Scotland with these tyres on it, which was expensive. So... They are, like I said, they're Arivo Terramax ARV Pro AT, so all-terrain style top, and they're a 60-40 split, so 60% road, 40% off-road. The economy has dropped down probably to around 30 to 33 at best, so we've lost 7 to 8 miles to the gallon, you know, and that's a lot just for these, you know, so... We've lifted the van by putting these wheels on it, so it's more in the airflow. You know, it's certainly not the most aerodynamically efficient thing in the world. And of course, we've put these big tires on it. It's changed the rolling radius of the wheel as well. They are slightly bigger, so it's also thrown the speedo out, which is another problem. So now when you're doing 60 mile an hour on the speedo, you're, you're actually doing a bit more than that. So you have to be very careful because you can you know, end up speeding without realising. Um, and at 70 mile an hour, which this is permitted to do on a dual carriageway because it was a combi, so it's registered as an M class taxation, not an N. So this is a car derived uh, van as such. So it is you know feasible to do 70 mile an hour in it. Not that I do, because it's now become so horrifically uneconomical, it's 
you can't really do it. So I sort of hover around 60 mile an hour mark anyway, because otherwise you're just consuming fuel like no one's business. Um, but at 70 mile an hour on the speedo, the van is actually doing 75. So that's bad. You know, it's, it's under reading because of the size of the tires that are on it. We're lucky with these ones that they're not particularly noisy, but it is noisier than what it was with normal road tires on it. So we've lost that efficiency, we've gained some more noise out of it, and the speedo is incorrect. And obviously we are using more fuel than what we were before. So there's some pretty big negatives. Also, and again, depends on your use and what you you know your favour. It is now more difficult to get in and out of because it is higher off the ground. You know, so we're finding like you know we're picking up family in it. You know, the elderly and the young are struggling to get in it. So it's just again, it's subjective, isn't it? But if you're after that lifestyle choice of a raised van, um these are probably some of the things you've not really thought about before you've done it until you then find it you know in everyday use that it's actually a bit harder to live with than what you thought it was going to be and it's certainly not something that i thought was going to be too much of an issue and i thought the miles per gallon might have changed a little bit but i didn't realize how much it was going to change so that for me has been a massive negative impact and it's really a shame because it's such a great little van that i really wanted to use it but now it's like it's worse to use than anything else that we've got so i don't know how long it's going to stay as a swamper to be honest so it might go back to being um its original sort of um style with some road wheels on it and and we'll de-swamper it or if somebody comes along and they really like that look and they're prepared to live with those things it might be something that you know we then sell on i don't know We'll see what happens. It doesn't need to go anywhere, but yeah, it could be um, something that we consider. So thanks for joining me again and listening to our little Swamper chat today. Do consider subscribing. If you're not a subscriber already, it does help us get the channel out there to you folks and share our videos. So again, thank you and we'll see you in the next video.